Hi history lovers, welcome back to my channel Hungry for History where I provide you a little bit of history in each video. I'm Dr. Luli Clark. I'm always hungry for knowledge about the past and for understanding how the past shaped the present. In the last two videos, I talked about the origins of ice cream and demonstrated a Parmesan cheese recipe published by an English confectioner in 1786. If you haven't seen the first two videos yet, I recommend you watch them that can help you have a better understanding of today's content. In today's video, I'm going to cover the early history of ice cream in the US and to explain how ice cream was transformed from a luxury product for the rich to an everyday treat accessible to the ordinary people. Stay tuned! Historians don't know exactly when European settlers brought ice cream to the US. Europeans brought ice cream recipes in various forms like in their cookbooks, in their own handwriting, or in their memories. One of the earliest advertisements for ice cream was put out by Philip Lindsay on a local newspaper called the New York Gazette in 1774. As a confectioner from London, Lindsay announced to the local residents about his arrival in America and told them he was selling jams, jellies, pastries, sugar candies, fruits, and ice cream. In the late 18th century, ice cream became very popular among the upper classes in New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia. Thanks to a high concentration of dairy farms that surrounded the city, Philadelphia became a center of ice cream making, producing a distinctive variety made of cream, sugar, and flavorings, but no eggs. African Americans played an important role in popularizing ice cream in Philadelphia in the middle of the 19th century. Possibly the most well known was Augustus Jackson. The former cook for the White House, Jackson moved to Philadelphia around 1832 and opened his own catering business. He made ice cream for his own customers and supplied local ice cream parlors, some owned by African Americans. American founding fathers were also among the people who sparked the country's love for ice cream. George Washington had a serious sweet tooth. Inventory records for Washington's Virginia plantation show that he had two pewter and eight tin ice cream pots and a 306 piece ice cream serving set. Washington and his wife Martha Washington liked to serve their guests ice cream purchased from local confectioners. When New York City served at the capital of the United States from April 1789 to July 1790, the Washingtons ordered more than 200 US dollars worth of ice cream from a local confectioners. 200 US dollars is equivalent to about 5,581 US dollars in 2019. If served on the table, ice cream was usually placed in an ice cream pail. Inside the pail, ice cream was put in a liner, which is surrounded above and below with ice. For an individual serving, ice cream was spooned into one or two handled china cup or saucer and eaten with a spoon. Some people preferred to sip directly from a cup as ice cream tended to be slushy due to lack of refrigeration. Thomas Jefferson was also one of the wealthy ice cream lovers. He discovered his love for ice cream during his years as ambassador to France from 1784 to 1789. He even brought home a handwritten recipe for French vanilla ice cream and his own ice cream making equipment. Jefferson also built ice houses that could hold 62 wagon loads of ice to preserve meat and dairy as well as ice cream. In the late 1790s, Pleasure Gardens, a concept transported from London to the American colonies, started appear in cities where a growing population craved for recreational spaces. Those gardens feature landscaped grounds, lights, music, theater, fountains, and grottoes, and created a wholesome atmosphere that welcomed the entire family. They offer refreshments like lemonade, ice cream, pound cake, and alcohol. Vanilla and lemon ice cream dominated the menus at the gardens in the early 19th century. When the famous British writer and sociologist Harriet Martineau visited a plantation in Alabama, she found a typical dinner there include turkey, ham, tongue, pork, 
honey, pickles, squash, cornbread, apple pie, pumpkin pie, raisins, almonds, hickory nuts, quote, and to crown the whole, large blocks of ice cream, unquote. By the mid of the 18th century, ice cream was sold by commercial establishments in both Chicago and St. Louis, but for many farm families, ice cream was still considered a rarity. Although ice cream was favored by the political elite in Washington and was considered essential for a successful and lavish party, some intellectuals believe leisurely luxuries like ice cream were corrupting this country. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the famous American philosopher and the transcendentalist poet, criticized that Americans were becoming too materialistic and unwise in spending their money. He says, quote, it is for cake that we run in debt. It is not the intellect, not the heart, not beauty, not worship that costs so much. Why needs any man be rich? Why must he have horses, fine garments, handsome apartments, access to public houses, and places of amusement? We dare not trust our weight for making our house pleasant to our friend, and so we buy ice cream." Unquote. Unlike those European confectioners who touted ice cream's health benefits, some Americans showed concerns about eating ice cream for health reasons. They argued that cold foods like ice cream after a meal reduce the temperature of the stomach and disrupt digestion. Keep in mind that by the mid of the 19th century, ice cream was a still fairly uncommon treat. In 1859, only 4,000 gallons were produced in the entire United States. Women's magazines like Goody's Ladies Book recognize that, quote, ice cream has now become one of the necessary luxuries of life. A party or special entertainment could hardly be thought of without this indispensable requisition." Unquote. How did ice cream transform from an exclusive preserve for the rich into an affordable mass market product? The first transformative invention came out in 1843. On September 9, 1843, a Philadelphia woman, Nancy Johnson, received a patent for her hand-cranked ice cream maker. Her design sped up the process of churning the frozen confection and ushered in the era of mass manufacturing of the product. This new invention had only three main parts, a tall tap, a slender cylinder with a close-fitting lid, and a dasher with a removable crank. It was designed to simultaneously freeze, scrape, and stir creams to achieve a smoother, fluffier texture. In England, inventor Thomas Masters also received the patent for his ice cream making device the same year as Johnson. Johnson's and Masters' invention helped to ease the labor of churning ice cream by hand. In the second half of the 19th century, with the help of new innovations, American entrepreneurs started manufacturing ice cream and selling it to the masses. Jacob Faso, a dairyman in Baltimore, was credited for opening the first commercial ice cream factory. In 1851, Faso opened his first factory in Pennsylvania, where he made his ice cream with manually operated churns. Then he spread his business to Baltimore, New York, Boston, and Washington, D.C. After the Civil War, the number of ice cream manufacturers increased dramatically. They were from different backgrounds, but together, they built an industry that produced more than 5 million gallons in 1899. By 1882, William Breyer, who started his ice cream business in his kitchen in Philadelphia, had opened six retail stores. In 1896, after he passed away, his wife and sons opened Breyer's first manufacturing plant. By 1918, Breyer's ice cream company was producing more than 1 million gallons of ice cream a year. Ice cream wholesalers like Jacob Faso and Breyer's helped to expand the availability of ice cream in the second half of the 19th century. But there was still a noticeable gap between the classes. Historian Anne Cooper Fundberg, in her book Chocolate, Strawberry, and Vanilla, A History of America Ice Cream, noticed that while the rich ate ice cream at home or from ice cream parlors, the urban poor bought cheap, often unsanitary ice cream from street vendors and consumed it on the spot. 
Since the early 19th century, ice cream had been hawked on the streets of New York City. But after the Civil War, the number of street vendors grew exponentially in big cities. Some of them sold inexpensive ice cream made of cheap ingredients. They were called Hokey Pokey Men. Many linguists believe that Hokey Pokey is a corruption of Hocus Pocus, an Italian expression meaning oh how little or oh how cheap. By 1901, it was estimated that there were 4,000 Hokey Pokey vendors on the streets of New York City. Even though the stereotypical Hokey Pokey man was Italian, but in fact, representatives from every immigrant group and both men and women were found peddling ice cream on the street. In New Orleans, Hokey Pokey men and women were seen carrying wooden pails on their heads packed with ice and ice cream. Walk through the narrow streets of the French Quarter, some vendors pushed their cans of ice cream in wheelbarrow. Some had small carts pulled by goats or horses. As the Hokey Pokey vendors made their way along the streets, they shouted out the cry, Hokey Pokey penny a lump, Hokey Pokey sweet and cold, for penny new or old. Hokey Pokey ice cream was sold for penny either in a shallow glass known as penny leak or wrapped in a piece of wax paper. When customers finished their ice cream and returned the glass penny leak, the vendor would wipe the glass with a towel before refilling it for the next customer. Children were the frequent patron of Hokey Pokey vendors. In some old pictures of Hokey Pokey vendors, they were always surrounded by swarms of children. Though ice cream became popular among both the rich and the poor in the late 19th century, the technology of making ice cream did not change much. After a small hand cranked freezer with a dasher replaced the pot freezer method, manufacturers progressed to use horsepower treat meal to turn the freezer and later switched to a gasoline engine. But ice cream factories still need a huge quantity of ice and salt. As the demand for ice went up, the natural ice industry experienced explosive growth. In the US, New England was one of those fertile ice producing regions that created ice barons like Frederick Tudor, who was known as Ice King. In the late 19th century, two technological inventions changed the trade of ice cream making. The invention of the centrifugal cream separator helped dairy industry produce a large quantity of cream with a consistent butterfat content. The invention of butterfat taster helped ice cream makers to scientifically measure fat content in milk or cream. In order to train workers to operate those technologies, the University of Wisconsin opened its dairy school in 1892, and in the same year, the Pennsylvania State College introduced ice cream making course. Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, co-founders of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, are 1978 alumni of the Penn State Ice Cream Making course. The 20th century witnessed dramatic changes in ice cream manufacturing due to advances in technology. Manufacturers started adopting mechanical refrigeration to produce ice and eventually to actually freeze ice cream. In the next episode of Hungry for History, we are going to explore the history of ice cream in 20th century United States. Before we say goodbye, I have a question for you. What do you find interesting about the early history of ice cream in the US? Please leave your comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for supporting my channel. I will see you in the next video.